these two formulas give you the exact same result. I prefer to use the second one whenever I'm using the chain rule or U substitution. <coughs> uh, you might be exposed to certain shortcuts. I would highly recommend at this stage to avoid them at all possible costs because later in the book we're going to use this idea and expand on it that I'm about to teach you and then you're going to be required to do it in reverse. <clears throat> so if you can't do it forward, you're not going to be able to do it in reverse. So there's a reason behind everything I'm setting up and that's to make your life easy down the road. So let's take a look at how we would s utilize this rule. Basically, if you had something that looked like this. The problem with this situation is that square root does not allow me to use my power rule uh, <coughs> because it's all inside that one radical. So to handle that, I'm going to let u equal x squared minus 7. And then h of x becomes the square root of u, or simply u to the 1 half. Now, What's important to note when we use this technique, I'm going to have to take the derivative of two separate items. So let's see that happen. h prime of x. First thing I'm going to do <coughs> is take the derivative of this like it was an x, even though it's not. And so the derivative properties would say power rule, bring down the 1 half, subtract one from the one half, but we're not done. That's the first part. The second part is to get du dx. Now, that's going to come from this formula over here, from our substitution. I can take this derivative with respect to x. Pretty easy. And now it's just a matter of putting everything back in and cleaning it up a little bit. So I have a 1 half u to the negative 1 half, which u is x squared minus 7, times du dx, which is 2x. And again, this can be cleaned up a little bit more. So. I've got a fraction. This first part puts a 2 in the denominator. This second factor is going to give me a square root of x squared minus 7 in the denominator, because it's the negative exponent. And my third component, 2x, will be in the numerator. Again, this is just algebra at this point. Reduce your fraction. Final answer. And again, all of this is just algebra skills here. And that's your final answer. So, as usual, a lot of times, the algebra is going to be your most difficult aspect here. Let's try another one. And basically, what we're looking at is a function that's trapped inside of a function. Let's say we had something like sine of <coughs> x squared minus e to the x. <coughs> OK, well, I can take the derivative of the sine, and that's a pretty good place to start, where I let u equal x squared minus e to the x. Then I have the sine of u. So when I take the derivative of f of x, the derivative of sine, first part, is cosine of u. Second part, du dx. Never forget this second component. And I'm going to get that from my u substitution that I made. Take the derivative, du dx is 2x minus e to the x. 
And now I just plug everything back in and clean up the algebra if possible. So cosine of u, where u is x squared minus e to the x, times du dx, which is 2x minus e to the x. Please be careful. You cannot clean these up together because this first component is inside the cosine. I'm taking the cosine of that. And the second component is outside, being multiplied. If it makes you feel a little bit better, you might want to write it this way. All of this times the cosine of whatever you have inside. Again, you can write it either way. You just can't multiply the two pieces, this and this together, because the second part is inside the cosine. So just be careful with that when you're simplifying. So let's other possible examples. I could have an exponential function. e to the sine of x. So in this scenario, I'll do my u substitution, and I'll let u equal the sine of x. And what I'm left with is e to the u. So to take the derivative, again, two separate derivatives are going to be multiplied. The derivative of e to the u is e to the u times the second part, du dx. And in this case, when I take the derivative of u with respect to x, I get cosine of x. So now I will do my back substitution, where u was sine of x, and du dx was the cosine of x. And that's my final answer. And again, since I have a derivative, I can use this always, just like every previous question, to find the slope of a tangent line for any point. As long as I know the x value, I can use the derivative to give me that slope.